Coming up in today's video, we've got Avatar Mountains, food that will make you drool and me crying in a cable car. Why you ask? Well, stick around and find out. Oh my goodness. This is the most incredible view, guys. Check out where I am. I am in Zhang Jiajie. This might look quite familiar to you because, well, firstly, it's one of the most popular tourist destinations in China. So if you've been to China before, odds are you have been here. But the reason why it probably looks familiar is because these mountains here were actually the inspiration behind the Hallelujah Mountains in Avatar. Yeah, you can definitely see the resemblance. They're these like long, skinny, jutty, uppy pieces of rock. Quartzite sandstone, in fact. And within this park, there are more than 3,000 of these pillars. And fun fact, this is actually my first ever time coming to Zhang Jiajie after my 10 years in China. It's been a long time coming and it always irks me when someone who's been in China for like two, three weeks has seen a place that I haven't. So officially can tick it off the list. I'm already here in Hunan, so yeah, great opportunity to come. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up that little bit now because there's like four or five tourist groups about to swarm down on this beautiful view. <laughs> because this place is a huge tourist destination, if you are able to avoid weekends and public holidays, do yourself a favor and avoid them. I did, and apart from the major viewpoints, which will always have some people, I found myself pretty much alone when walking the stretches between the famous sites. It was surprisingly peaceful, actually. And this park is absolutely massive. The ticket that I purchased to get in is actually valid for four days because that's how long they say it takes to see absolutely everything. As for myself, I'm just going to be doing a day trip, but I'm definitely making the most out of these hills and ups and downs as good training for a major, major walking trip I'm currently preparing for. So in April, my family and I are going to be going to Italy and walking from Milan to Rome. It's called the Via Francigena. The entire walk goes from Canterbury in England to Rome in Italy, but we're just doing the last section through Italy, which will already be an 800 kilometer walking route. We're going to be walking roughly 25 to 30 kilometers a day for six weeks. Weeks. And you're probably thinking, April? It's already April. Yes, actually, by the time you watch this video on the 18th of April, I believe, I will be boarding my flight to Italy. Because it is a six week trip and I'm packing very, very light, I'm actually not gonna be bringing my laptop. It means that I need to have at least six videos filmed, edited, subtitled and scheduled by the time I leave. Update from here at the editing desk uh, where my hair is slowly turning gray and the only time I leave this desk chair is to go to sleep at night. I'm, <laughs> I'm really making the very most of the last few days before I go to Italy. Um, I've definitely bitten off more than I can chew. This has been a huge undertaking to have so many videos prepared and edited before I go on holiday. So please, if you're watching this video and you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, leave me a comment, press that like button, show me this wasn't for nothing. Don't worry, there's gonna be Italy content coming for you guys. And yeah, let's get back to the video. It's March here in Zhang Jiajie. The flowers are blooming and there are monkeys everywhere. <laughs> There are signs warning you not to mess with the wild monkeys, but of course some people just got to do it for the WeChat moments, which was on my part very entertaining to watch. Here, every viewpoint is an absolute banger. 10 out of 10 views. Also very happy that the route I happened to take had me walking mostly downhill. But don't stress, if you find yourself on the uphill route, there are men scattered along the way ready to carry you up. One of the main attractions here in this national park is the glass elevator that can take you very quickly up and down the mountain. Of course, I needed to give it a try. It's very, very, very crowded in here. We've got a lot of people. We're going quite fast. At a certain point, you emerge from the rock, revealing the most jaw-dropping view as you fly higher and higher into the air. At a total height of 335 meters, this is actually the world's tallest and fastest outdoor lift. That was a very quick trip to the top, only like a minute and a half. It's very, very fast. Oh my goodness, look at this view behind me here. We are so... Hi. Oh my gosh, I get vertigo because that is literally a drop right down there. Okay, here we go. I'll show you guys. Holding onto my camera very tightly here because, oh my goodness, my stomach just dropped when I saw that view. To be 
perfectly honest with you guys. All these years, I thought Zhang Jiajie referred specifically to like these Avatar Mountains, this national park here. But Zhang Jiajie is actually a full-on city, a fact I've only learned very, very recently. And it's actually home to a lot of food specialties. So I thought since this is such a popular tourist destination and so many people are coming here, I thought I'd share with you guys some of the amazing foods you can eat here. So not only will your legs get a workout when you come to Zhang Jiajie, but your taste buds too. And after all the walking I've done today, I'm ready for a feast tonight. So first up, we're starting with dinner. I have just come down off the mountain and I've heard that the fish here in Zhang Jiajie is quite tasty. I've been recommended to try this restaurant that specializes cooking local fish in the local style. So I've just learned this restaurant has been in business for over 20 years here in Zhang Jiajie, specializing specifically in two varieties of fish, Gui Yu, which is Mandarin fish, and Huang Gu Yu, which is uh, yellow catfish, I believe is the translation. Here, the fish is prepared in one of two ways. Option one is this here, boiled in a clear broth, recommended for those who can't eat spicy. So you guys already know I'm going for whatever option two is. This is it here. It's called Ganggo Dry Pot. In this style, the fish is pre-cooked, then placed in a wok of bright red spicy sauce that bubbles away on the bottom. So our mandarin fish is currently bubbling away. It looks like we have two fish in there and it, it smells amazing. Super, super fragrant. It smells like it's going to be very spicy, maybe quite salty. So I'm glad we've got some coriander on top there for freshness. It's also been served with a plate of free pickles. Nothing better than a free pickle. And we also have this bowl of, um, of cabbage, which I've been instructed I can also put around the outside. Maybe when I've started eating a bit more fish, um, just as like a little thing to eat at the end. Also something I haven't seen before, I ordered myself some rice and instead of a bowl of rice coming out, it's actually a full on rice cooker full of rice. Like, who needs a wine bucket when you've got a rice bucket next to your table? So I'm definitely going to go in with a big bowl of rice because that fish looks really spicy. I'm coming back for you. Let's get stuck into this, guys. I'm taking out a big hunk of fish and replacing it with some cabbage so it can start cooking in that luscious sauce. On the outside, it's a little bit crispy. It almost looks like it's been deep fried before it's been put in this pot. Oh, yum. Mm. That fish flesh is so tender, it just comes apart and it, it doesn't have a fishiness to it um, because it's very, very fresh. They actually kill the fish right in front of you, or not right in front of you, like you can go and watch if you want, but it's not like, they're not forcing you to watch the fish death, if you know what I mean. Um, but I know that it is fresh. Anyway, it's really, really full of flavor. And I'm sure that flavor, as well as that spice, is only gonna intensify as it continues to bubble away there. But now it's not too intensely spicy. It's actually a very nice level. Just got a nice warmth in my mouth, a slight tingle on my lips. What this is though, is incredibly, incredibly fragrant. Like they say that Hunan food, it's xiang la, like fragrant and spicy. And that's exactly what this is. It's not just salty, it's it's got ginger in it, it's got that freshness from the coriander, you've got fresh chili in there that gives it that slight zappiness. I feel like the balance of flavors is absolutely perfect. But when it does tend to get a little bit overwhelming, that flavor, you've got your rice here to the rescue. And this pickle. Oh, yum. That's a good pickle. Level up and eat it all in one go. Some fish, some rice, and a pickle. Guys, this is living. Honestly, I can't remember enjoying fish so much in quite some time. Anyway, our cabbage looks like it's just about ready to go. Oh, mmm. <clears throat> well, it's definitely spicy now. But very, very delicious. The freshness and like the slight crunchiness of that cabbage, I've taken it out before it's completely limp. No one likes a limp one, you know. Wow, can't believe I went there. Um, but yeah, this is, <laughs> this is a slightly erect cabbage. It's a big mouthful and ultimately had me removing my clothes. It's getting spicier and spicier. Anyway, this was delicious. I ate literally every bit of fish meat on the bones, every last leaf of cabbage and every, well, almost every single pickle. Yeah, fair to say I liked it. Can't wait to see what food tomorrow brings. Good morning, happy breakfast, most important meal of the day. And we are starting off with a zap with this bowl of cold noodles, liang mian. So here in Jiang Jiajie, they also have a specific variety of mi and rice noodles like everywhere else in Hunan province, but I've been told that actually locals love eating these liang mian, which are wheat noodles that are served cold, and it's actually served with pig's ear, as you can see on top of here. So pig's ear cold noodles. First glance, it's giving me summery, refreshing vibes with all of this cucumber there and coriander. That pig's ear actually looks really delicious and smells good too. I actually want to just try a piece of this pig's ear. 
Oh, chewy, as you would expect from a pig's ear, but quite spicy and a little salty. Oh, <coughs> man, that pig's ear's got a kick to it. <coughs> Whoa. And I don't think the spice is going to end there because we also have some fresh chili on the side there. And also this, this chili here. <laughs> Lots of different chili varieties in this. Also got a little bit of soup under there. Let's see. Ooh, yum. It's like salty, a little bit sour. You've got those flavors from the chilies in there. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like a salad dressing kind of vibe. So I've mixed this all up so all those flavors and textures can combine. Let's have a big bite of those pig ear noodles. The first word that comes to mind when I eat these noodles is refreshing. It is so refreshing and zappy, slightly spicy, but those noodles kind of dilute the amount of spice that you're getting at any one time. I love the different textures, especially the textures from these peanuts that give it like this crunch, which contrasts really well against the chewiness of that pig's ear and that slight al dente-ness of those noodles. It would honestly be the perfect thing to have in summer. And I heard that it gets pretty hot here in the summertime. So I think this is the perfect dish. So I thought while I wait for my breakfast to digest, I would visit Tianmen Shan Heavenly Gate. It's another national park here in Zhang Jiajie. And uh, I'm currently in line to get on the world's longest cable car. It actually goes from the middle of Zhang Jiajie city. It's so surreal actually seeing the cable car just going over roads and stuff like that. And it is long. It's got a total length of 7.4 kilometers and takes an entire 28 minutes to go from one side to the other. The first half of the ride is very chill. You're nice and close to the ground. You zip over some nice little villages and lakes. It was here that the cable car stopped for the first time. And yeah, gone went my chill vibes. Oh my God, we have stopped halfway and I'm freaking out. We then started moving backwards. Oh, yeah, Eventually we started moving forward again, but by that stage I had already started feeling pretty nervous and unsettled. Just in time for this cableway to turn up the intensity and start climbing up, up and up into the mountains and whoa, that vertigo really started to kick in. Every little bump was enough to cause my life to flash before my eyes. I was scared. And when the cable car stopped again at this point, this turned me into full-blown panic mode. We were just so high and the cabin was rocking around from side to side. I started bawling my eyes out and I had to keep my eyes closed for the remainder of the ride. So I'm glad I at least captured this time-lapse so I can enjoy those views now while safe and sound on the ground. Oh my God, that was honestly <laughs> the most terrifying 28 minutes of my life. I was like, crying by the end, like no joke, I've literally been sobbing my eyes out. Bit of an awkward moment in that little cable car with everyone else. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be at the top, but I wouldn't be celebrating too soon because this path is gnarly. Oh my God. <laughs> and literally on the side of a cliff. This pathway is nuts. Like, I don't, I don't have the courage to show you how far this goes down, holy moly. But it goes down really, really far. So you can see that path there. That's kind of what I'm walking on now. So it's just a path and then underneath is just like full on drop. We are like just walking on the side of the cliff. I would not recommend this place for people with fear of heights. I didn't think I had a fear of heights, but I feel like maybe I do now after crying for 10 minutes in this cable car probably indicates I've somehow along the way developed some type of fear. Um, yeah, it's slightly terrifying up here. And the heart palpitations just keep palpitating. I am literally walking through the skies right now. We are just so high up that these mountains over here, we're looking down on them. We're looking down on these really, really tall mountains because we're on an even taller mountain. Man, this is really unlike any hike or mountain walk I've done before. And when you descend to the bottom of this cliff, you'll understand the reason this place is called Tianmen Shan Heavenly Gate. There's a hole in the mountain. And if there's one thing I've learned in China, holes in mountains or rock faces will sell tickets. And for anyone like me, not too keen to get back on the cable car we took up, I'm happy to report the cable car down is a lot bigger and a lot less scary. Full circle moment, I am back at the original cable car location here in Deng Jia and I think fear must burn calories because I am absolutely ravenous. I'm so excited to head to my last meal of my time here in Deng Jia and I've actually left the most iconic one for last. So here in Deng Jia you'll find a lot of places selling this dish here, san xia guo. So this here is a san xia guo and xia guo means cook in a pot and that's what happens here and san is the number three. So basically three things cooked in a pot and you can actually choose here three of these items. These are all like varieties of meat and also like um, offal. So I've gone for this one here, 核桃肉, walnut 
meat. <laughs> I've gone for nyo du cow stomach and I've also gone for some bacon, la rou. And another thing I like about this is you can choose your portion size. I'm here alone, so I'm going for a small portion, 68 renminbi. And here it is. That looks absolutely incredible. It comes out in this pot, which I'm loving. And wow. If only smell could travel through video. As well as my three meats in there, you've also got potato, ginger, garlic, onion, and a lot of fresh green chili. I'm so glad that I ordered that bacon in it, that cured meat, because it's giving it such a nice smokiness. It looks like it's gonna be quite spicy as well. So thankfully we have our plate of pickles. I'm so loving this free pickle concept here in Zhang Jiajie, and the pickles are so good. Fun fact, this is my favorite type of pickles, the ones that are like slightly pink. I love just how sweet and sour that they are and crunchy. I could just eat a plate of those by themselves. I'm gonna go in first with a piece of that cured meat because my mouth is just absolutely watering looking at it. Mm. Mm. So smoky and salty and fragrant. Ooh. And there's so many layers of flavor coming at me actually. Goes perfectly with pickles and rice. Yum. I've just loved everything that I've eaten here in Zhang Jiajie. The flavors are unapologetically bold. Spicy, but not too spicy. Like, I don't feel like the dishes have been spicy for the sake of it. The spice has always made sense. And in this dish, I'm not sweating. I can feel it slightly, but I'm not overwhelmed by it. And I feel like just all the flavors go together. And you can tell this dish has a lot of history because those flavors feel really thought out. It's delicious. I would really recommend if you come to Zhang Jiajie. If you don't try some of this local food, you've really missed half of the experience at least in my opinion. I am so happy I made the trip. It almost didn't happen. So I want to give a huge thank you to my new friends in Changsha, Zona and her sister Ziff. Without you guys and your recommendations and your encouragement, I'm not sure if I would have made the trip here. And actually all the restaurants that I visited today were their recommendations. So thank you, thank you, thank you, you guys. And also a big thank you to you at home watching this video. This is going to be my last video for now from Hunan province. I've had the most amazing time, the most amazing food adventures, have loved the food. I definitely feel like Hunan cuisine is underrated. And um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It would mean the absolute world to see your support on my channel. And uh, sorry, my mouth keeps watering, so I'm finding it hard to create sentences. So I'm going to say goodbye for now and finish off this delicious, delicious pot of meat. <laughs> Bye from Hunan.